Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here. Yeah, you know, I'm on a run right now on the show of people that I met at the Unstoppable Success Summit. And we were talking before I hit record about how the room was just filled with such amazing people who were hitting the stage and sharing their inspiring story. And you and I got a lot of time to talk and get to know each other. And you do something really cool that I got to then do for my now wife. And yeah. we're going to get to that, you know, the future you project and and all that stuff. But why don't we take a second and have you explain who is Jen today? And then we'll break down how you got there. Okay. So Jen today is the founder and CEO of a company called Future You Project. And we specialize in programs, gifts, and resources that help people take their lives to the next level, make an impact and, and truly thrive in life and business. Yeah. And it's so cool what you're doing. You're, you're It's like when I think about, for lack of a better term, the retail side of your business, that you're able to ship these things to individuals and walk them through and, and really give people who in moments of their life feel hopeless or stressed yeah. or worried. And it gives them hope to go on the back end of all this that I'm going through. Yeah. I get to feel I'm going to be good, right? I'm going to be better. Yeah. I'm going to grow. I'm going to do all those things. Talk a little bit about what Future You Project is. And then, and then I want to get into how it even started because that story is absolutely mind-blowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Future You Project, so the gift side of Future You Project is... Um, it's these personalized gifts that are themed out depending on what someone's going through in life. And they come with messages that are from your future self. So it really is, it's a way that resonates with a person in, in, in a really unique sense, because it feels like that message of hope or those words of encouragement are coming from yourself versus an outside source. And it's really impactful. And we have Five week gift programs where every week for five weeks you get those messages, which from a repetition standpoint, if someone's going through a really hard time, is so important. And then we have the one time gift deliveries where they have just the you know the one letter, but again, so impactful, memorable. A lot of people like frame their letters that are personalized from their future self. It's just it's a truly magical way to make an impact in someone's life. Yeah, and, and you know, I I met you three weeks before I got married, and we were sitting in the green room, and I was like, on your web, you didn't know, but I was like, on your website, and I found one to like the future wife, right, future yeah. self to the what it was called bride to be, right? I think it was called yeah. the package was called bride to be, yeah. and I was like, hey, how quickly does this ship out? Uh, yeah. And so I was able to get that for uh, my fiance at the time, now wife, and it was a really cool moment because I knew it was coming, right? Like you messaged yeah. me, you're like, it's coming tomorrow. I was like, oh my yeah. god. And so it was like this weird moment to see her open it. And it was just a beautiful thing to go, you know what, you've put in all this work for this wedding. And at the end, it's going to be okay. absolutely amazing. And so talk a little bit about like the different types of scenarios that you got, you guys have planned out for people, just so people have an idea of what to expect. Yeah. So um, our five weeks, I like to start there because again, they're the ones that really like someone if they're going through a hard time. So for example, loss of a loved one or someone maybe who's battling with breast cancer or struggling with infertility issues. Any, you know, need, needs hope, needs encouragement that better days are ahead. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Divorce, which was how it all, you know, started with me, um, those kind of things. And then there are, we're really about celebrating, elevating and inspiring people through all stages of life. So there's the good stuff too, right? There's the job promotions where, or the weddings where it's like, this is amazing. This is such a special time in your life or congratulations. You worked so hard to get here. Like, you know, take a minute to just take it all in and, and congratulate yourself, you know? Um, and then there's things like, you know, if you just have a baby and you're a new mom and you haven't slept in a couple of weeks and you're wondering if you're doing anything right, hmm. you know, and it's, and it says, yeah, you're going to sleep again and you're doing great. Just trust your instincts. You've got this kind of thing. So there's literally everything you can imagine loss of a pet, is a popular one as well, because, you know, that's such a hard time in someone's life. It's kind of hard to know what to, how to support someone. So, yeah. Yeah. I love it. So obviously you hinted towards the next part of what I wanted, what I wanted to talk about. You know, you talked about divorce and how crazy that can be for so many people as they go through it. Now your story, and I want you to share it, your story, when I heard it for the first time, I was like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I could never imagine in that moment of my life, like everything falling apart when I thought it was such a positive moment. Talk a little bit yeah. about your story and then how this idea of future you was born. Yeah. I'm so lucky that this happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> How strange is that? 
No. So um, my story is in the spring of 2018, I received a phone. I was living in Charleston, South Carolina with my family at the time, and I was doing consulting work. And um, I received a phone call from my previous employer saying, hey, you know, that job you've always wanted. It's just around the corner for, for you. Would you be willing to come back and step in as the director of operations? And we're going to basically um, train you and prep you to take over as general manager within a couple of years, which was my dream job, like my entire career. And so obviously I was like, yes. Um, and we put the house on the market. And next thing you know, everything that we own is in boxes and we're heading to Miami from Charleston. And my husband at the time turns to me and says, uh, do you think we should get a divorce? And I was like, now, like today. And it was uh, shocking, but also like in his defense, I do have to say this. So we were not happy for many years. And here we are, right? Everything we own is in boxes. We had no place to live. So in his mind, he's like, we don't have a house yet. So we're not gonna, before we lock ourselves into another house, while everything we own is still in boxes, our son was three years old, right? So it was like, if we do this right, he'll never really remember anything different. Right. But in the moment I was like, we have no place to live. Our son is only three years old and I'm starting my new job tomorrow. Like mm. I didn't even know, I was so lost and confused and terrified and all the things that you would go through at a time like that. And it was a very, very difficult transition and time in my life because when we did kind of sort out where we were going to live and what that was going to look like, when we had, you know, when my husband, my ex-husband had my son, I was, I literally went from like, I was a go, 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 right? Like I was full-time mom, full-time career woman, full-time wife to all of the sudden, these nights that I didn't have my son sitting in this tiny apartment, <laughs> completely alone and, and very, very, very lost. And I just remember I would just sit there and, and, and literally just stare at the walls and be like, what do I do now? You know, like, and, and, and who am I? Like, I, I completely lost myself in all of those roles that by the time I could just look at myself in the mirror and, and be in that alone space, I was unrecognizable to myself. I was completely unhappy, very unhealthy and, um, and really, really struggling. So then about three months into that journey, I receive a package in the mail and it's some flowers and some chocolates. And it comes with a letter and the letter says, Hey girl, I know you're going through a really hard time right now, but I just want you to know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You are doing so much better than you're giving yourself credit for. You're a great mom. You've got this. I can't wait for you to see what the future has in store for you because it is magnificent. So hold on to hope. You know, everything's fine. I love you. Future Jen. Mm. And I had no idea who sent this to me, right? Yeah. And it was the coolest gift I'd ever received. And I remember posting it all over social media. And I remember like going to work the next day and being like, oh my gosh, calling all my friends. Was it you? Was it you? That was so <laughs> cool. Uh, and then imagine my surprise when a week later I get another gift. So none of my friends are saying it's them. I have no idea still who it is. Didn't expect anything else. A week later, I get another gift. And this time it's a really big wine glass and it's got my nickname Gen Z in it. And it says, hey girl, I know this has been a really tough week. I want you to fill this up and I want you to put your feet up and just rest in the knowledge that everything is gonna be just fine. I'm like, oh my gosh, love future Jen. This happens for five weeks in a row. And what happened was by the time the third and the fourth message came, I started to believe future Jen. It started to resonate with me. You know, all my friends and family telling me I was going to be okay was like, yeah, okay. I really don't think I'm going to be okay. But when future Jen said I was going to be okay, I was like, maybe I am. So then that sparked, that sparked a journey for me that completely transformed my life because I sat there and I went, well, if I am going to be this person, this thriving, happy person that future Jen says I'm going to be. A, what does that even look like? And B, how do I get there? And so then I went on a very intentional 
transformational journey, looking at the six key areas of my life and started rating myself on how I felt I was performing in those areas and prioritizing joy. And it was an incredible thing. Yeah. So it's yeah. beautiful. And, and to think like how powerful are words, right? Oh. When I think about for three months, you sat there and, and, you know, you should have, right? Your your life and the way that you thought it was going to be completely fell apart, right? Here you are trying to celebrate a job that you've always wanted while, yeah. you know, your marriage is now over and you don't see your son all the time and like all these yeah. terrible things. And for three months, you sat and wallowed uh, in that pity, which you should have, right? Like it's, yeah. it's hard to overcome that. But then within three weeks of the right words being spoken right. to you, right? Obviously written by a friend, but from your future self to understand like, okay, hey, if I start to look into the future versus worrying about the past or worrying about even right now, yes. everything shifts, right? So yes. words are so powerful. And to think yes. like within those three weeks, it changed how you approached life. That part is the part that blows my mind, right? When I heard your story for the first time, uh, you told me in the green room and then I saw you on stage and then I just heard it for a third time. And every time I get chills, because something that's so that's just so insanely powerful, right? And so here yeah. you are, you're getting three, four, five packages in a row. How yeah. did you find out who, did you find out who it was from? Yeah, so go back just a little bit to like, I think it was week three or four. One of the things that Future Jen had said was, do something today that brings you joy. And I remember talking about this at Amberly Lagos event. And I remember just going, well, I don't even know. Like, I have no idea what brings me joy anymore. And so I got a little joy journal and this will, I'll answer your question in a minute because it kind of leads to that. But yeah, I got this joy journal and I said to myself, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down every day, anything that makes me smile, big, small, in between all the things. And it literally started with, I love Starbucks. <laughs> like, I love Starbucks. <laughs> and, um, and so it was like, I ha I smiled at the drive through at Starbucks this morning, like whatever. And then literally that day, um, somebody that I work with in the lunchroom, there was some salsa music playing and they just grabbed me and started dancing with me. And I was just like, and I, I just love it. And I remember like when I worked on cruise ships, how fun that was. And I'm a terrible dancer, but I love it. <laughs> and so I wrote it down in my joy journal and I went home that night and I went on Google and I found a dance instructor who would come to my house every Monday and teach me and give me dance lessons, right? Wow. And so that sparked me on this journey of joy. And then next thing you know, I'm at brunch. This is, and this is again, going back to the power of words, like one thing, do something today that brings you joy. Then spurred me into taking a dance lesson. Next thing you know, I'm opening my mind. Well, if I can do that, I can do anything else. And a friend talks about this Spartan race and I'm like, well, I'm 80 pounds overweight. I can't run more than 30 seconds. I'm having a hard time keeping up with my son. You know, like I, one of the things I really wanted to do to be this future gen was get healthier. And I didn't know how I was going to do it because I hate exercise. So when my friend was like, I just signed up for the Spartan. And she tells me that it's this thing where you run for a little bit and you stop, and then you, <laughs> you know, overcome these crazy obstacles and stuff. I was like, I can run and stop. And all, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I started looking up that and I signed up for a Spartan. So what happened was every decision that I made and every intentional decision that I made to live a more joyous, healthy, fulfilled life and live up to my potential because I believed that I could because of these words, I just started thriving on a different level and everything about my life just accelerated. And next thing you know, this promotion that I was supposed to get in two, three years was pre presented to me in 11 months Wow! because everything was just better. I was better. And, um, and it just impacted every single aspect of my life. So literally almost a year later, 11 and a half months later to getting that fifth future you gift, I'm moving into my corner office in Miami. I got the promotion. I'm getting a ton of flowers delivered and, you know, cards and all of that from friends and family. And next thing you know, I get a knock on the door and the sky's holding a bonsai tree. And I'm on the phone and I'm like, you know, put it on my desk kind of thing. And he walks in and he puts it down. And I look down and the note, the note on the bonsai tree says, I told you so. Love, future Jen. Hmm. 
And I was just like, what? And in that moment, I knew, I was like, this needs to be shared with the world. This is so impactful. It's the most breathtaking experience I've ever had. And so anyway, so in that packing slip with the bonsai tree, there was a, there was the name of the person. It was my friend, Christy from Canada. Mm -hmm. And so I immediately called her in the office. I'm like, girl, you know, it was you. I knew it was you all along kind of thing. And yeah, like, oh, you weren't supposed to know. And I said, <laughs> you know, listen, no, what we did, what you did for me, you need to share. We need to share it with the world because this is, this is such an impactful, important thing to do for people. Like you don't realize you changed my life by giving me hope, by giving me words of inspiration, by allowing me an opportunity to believe in myself in a way and see myself in a way I'd never seen myself before, you know? And then that was the night I remember just going home and, and just writing, writing, writing all the things that a person goes through in their life that, you know, this could matter. And next thing you know, I had 30 life events on this piece of paper and I went, okay, well, so now I've, I've got a start curating some boxes and writing some letters. And that was a year long journey of finding the vendors and finding the boxes and designing the logos and building everything, building the brand on the back end, you know? So that's how it all started. Yeah. It's, it's so beautiful and how a spark of inspiration can lead to so much action, right? Like, I think that's, that's the part of the story. I think as people are listening to this, who might be like, man, I wish somebody would send me a future you. You can't make somebody send you a future you. I mean, I guess you could send one to yourself, but you know, um, the the key here is you took action, right? You change, you decided to change your life, right? Yeah. The inspiration is an important piece. Like I believe in daily motivation, right? It's like a shower, right? You have to shower mm -hmm. every single day. I believe you have to be motivated every single day in some way, shape or form. But at yeah. the end of the day, it takes action, right? Yeah. Uh, and so as you were beginning to build momentum in your life, what were the, some of the things that kept you going? Like beyond, you know, when the, when the letters stopped, what kept you going to then go get that promotion and now build what is going to be a massive empire? Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, it, it was the belief in myself and the, like I said, the intentional inspired action that I took. Right. So when I, the very first question that I asked myself was, how joyous are you? Because it asked me, you know, do something that brings you joy. And I, when I couldn't answer that question, I didn't even know what brought me joy. I thought, well, how happy am I? And I remember just sitting there thinking, you know, on a scale from one to 10, if 10 is exuberantly happy on all levels and one is clinically depressed, like, where are you, Jen? And I gave myself a two. And I remember just crying and crying, looking at that two. And I thought, okay, so let's think about all the areas of my life and start rating where I am because in my job, I was doing great, right? Like I was where I wanted to be. This was an exciting time in my life in that particular area of my life. So when I finally, I looked at physical and mental health and I looked at my finances and I looked at my relationships and then I looked at career and I looked at spiritual wellness and I looked at community contributions and I started rating myself. So once I got through that and I could see where I was where, what areas needed the most attention, you know, versus the others, which I've learned over the last four years since this journey, I do it now twice a year. I've learned it's constantly changing and evolving, you yeah. know, and the, the important thing is to pay attention and to take stock of where you are. Like we do this with our finances. We do this with our bookkeeping, but we don't do it with our own joy and our own right. happiness. It's the craziest thing. And when you start doing that, and you become aware, self-aware of where you are thriving and where you are declining or where you could are, you have challenges, then you can be more intentional about the things that you're doing to improve certain areas of your life. And so for me, one of the biggest things was my morning routine and implementing that and getting up a lot earlier so that I could do the journaling and do the meditation and do the exercise that is a game changer. And I know that everyone talks about it, but they talk about it for a reason. It is magic, you yeah. know? And as soon as I stop doing that, I feel it in every aspect of my life. Um, so yeah, it's about, it's about being intentional. It's about promising yourself to put yourself first. And then it's about promising yourself that you're going to keep your promises to yourself. It's not always mm. easy to do, you know? Yeah. 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 So then, so that's how the program started. Right. Because then it was like, to your point, I had, I had someone do something so remarkably beautiful for me 
that I wanted to share it with the world so that other people could experience it, not just the experience of receiving, but the experience of giving, right? Because I, you have no idea how something like that could impact someone else's life. And the secret of living is giving. And so I just can't think of anything more beautiful. Like people, because words are so powerful, it's not the gift box, it's the words, you know? And people are framing their letters and they're keeping them in their nightstand and they hold onto them because they last forever. You know, like where flowers are a beautiful sentiment, this is next level stuff. So it it's very important to me like that people understand it's one of the nicest kinds of things that you could do for somebody else, especially if it's anonymous, you know, it's not yeah. about you, it's about them. And it's, it's just such a beautiful thing. But then to your point, like I also, I went through this journey. I did the hard work. I learned a lot of things along the way. And I, and I realized that we are all capable of becoming anything that we imagine for ourselves. Like anything is possible for you. And I want to inspire as many people as I can to realize their potential and to re and, ha and have that belief in themselves and then hold them, help them hold themselves accountable, you know? So that's how I started the future you family. Yeah. Which I love. And I want to talk about that because look, cause doing, doing the hard work is hard. Right. And I often talk about the five people to surround yourself with, right. To mm -hmm. make sure that you're being cheered on, being ac held accountable, uh, being supported, doing all of these things as you go through the hard work, because honestly, at the end of the day, like, I think people look at you and I, people who speak on stages and get on platforms and have a message and want to be heard, they look at us and they go, they got it all figured out. But the reality is we don't, like yeah. we're still putting in the hard work every yeah. single day and it's not yeah. easy. Right. And yes. so what I want to say to you or ask you is how do you continue to support yourself in your journey as you continue to grow and evolve? And then also how do you now support these women who have gotten the future you projects or who you've come in contact with who go, look, this is beautiful. I, I'm inspired, but I need more. Let's talk a little bit yeah. about that. Yeah. So one of the things that is most important to me and that I always recommend to everybody is same like you, like surround yourself with the right people. I have such an incredible support network of friends and family that, and I am a true believer that life isn't meant to be done alone. So find those people that you can surround yourself with that uplift you, that inspire you, that accept you, that love you unconditionally, you know, that, but are also going to push you to be your best, but, but you can be your realest self, your truest self with, right? So it's, just, it's, for me, it's my people. It's my, you know, it's my friends and family that are my everything. They're my lifeline. Um, and then it's also this relationship that I've learned to have with myself. You know, mm -hmm. like I said, like keeping your promises to yourself. I have a really different relationship with myself now than I've ever had. And my relationship with myself gets stronger and stronger every day. And I'm probably mo most inspired by that than anything else. Like I had no idea that, um, that I could feel this way about myself, that I'm so whole. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's cool. So, um, so then, yeah. So then when I started the future, you family, cause the whole kind of vision was we would have these gift boxes so people could support others and have that, um, people could receive and give the gifts. And then the programs are, how can we help people? Like we've got the, your path to purpose workshop, but the, the community, the future, you family is so cool because it's, um, every week you get a, a email from your future self right in your inbox you know so you start off the week with these these inspirational words from your future self and then we're constantly connected on whatsapp or on facebook group chats where i have weekly family pep talks where i jump on for 15 20 minutes and i talk about something inspiring we do challenges and giveaways and you know all that kind of stuff that we that we're doing together to hold each other accountable keep each other inspired support one another in any way that we can and it's growing it's a, it's a small but growing community and i'm so proud of it and i and i just love everyone who's in it and surprisingly or not there it's not just women you know there's a lot of men that was one thing like when we started this and you'll see it in the gifting program that we've got right now. It was it was women supporting women because it was my girlfriend who supported me. And that was kind of what I was inspired to do. But I've learned over the last couple of years that men are very much, or people who don't identify as, right? Uh, they 
they are very much like in need of the same love, hope, and encouragement as everybody else. So we've actually transitioned from women supporting women to humans supporting humans. And it's been a beautiful transition. So the next phase of, of gifts that we come out are going to be much more gender neutral um, to support humans. And yeah. so that's what we want to do in this community too. No, and it makes sense because actually, if you look at the five love languages, the one that resonates with men the most are words of affirmation. Yes. Um, and that's really, because I think that's why this, the Future You Project resonates with me so much and why I think it's such a cool idea. Because like words of affirmation blows everything else out of the water for me. Like you can mm -hmm. leave everything else. Like just mm -hmm. tell me I'm great. Tell me I've done some really great things in my life. Tell me I've overcome a lot. Yeah. You know, and acknowledge that. Yeah. I think a lot of that is, is because I... So, you know, you know, my five people, yeah, look at it that way. I love that. Yeah. And it's, and it's true because I've, there's, there's some in that it's physical touch, but those are really the, as I've talked to many men about this, like it's really words of affirmation is, is just huge for whatever reason. Um, and like, for me, like I'm my bruiser, right. When I think about my five people. And so since I'm a bruiser, I'm hard on myself. So I need words of affirmation to make sure that I'm not constantly beating myself up if things aren't going my way, right? Mm -hmm. That aha moment of like, let me look back and see how far I've come. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's really what you do for so many people is you shine a light on how far they've come. They might not be where they want to be, um, yeah. but celebrate where you are now. I mean, is that, yeah. am I far off by saying that? No, not at all. And it, it's very much that it's, and the messages that, that we send out from your future self every week are very much like it'll change every week, but when you know it is, it's messages of, oh my gosh, can you believe where you are? Like, look how far you've come. Or the next one is, hey, you know what? Sometimes life is hard. And I just want to remind you of the strength that you have within you and that everybody goes through life is a series of ups and downs. But you know, it's how you handle those ups and downs. And then it gives you tips on how to do that. And you're hearing it all from your future self. And you're going, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. You know, I feel all these things. I go through all these emotions. I I I'm a human having a human experience. And I am not alone. Mm. And you know, and I've got support and I've got love and I'm so loved. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love that. Something I say all the time is that your wounds are for you to learn and your scars are to teach other people. And yes, so amen. I want to ask you, like, how important is it once somebody is able to overcome like you did, like, how important is it to take that message and then share it with the world? I think it's everything. I do. I really do. I think it's our purpose. You know, so many people are searching for purpose and a lot of you, you know, so many people say to me, I don't know what my purpose, you're so lucky, you know, what your purpose is. Well, I didn't, I had to go through a lot of pain to find my purpose, you know, and I think that that's what the pain is for, yeah. you know, it's this opportunity to go deep and to, to, and I think, it, I think that's the key because we can't be afraid to go deep. We can't be afraid to feel the pain, live the pain. Don't band-aid the pain. Don't pretend it's not there. Don't push it down, feel it, live through it, go through it because on the other side is so much joy. And once you experience that, I think you're naturally driven actually to want to share that most people are because you, when you, when you survive something like that and you thrive through something like that, you, you want, you're just naturally inclined to want to share it with the world. And I think it's so important. Yeah, that's beautiful. So I want to ask you a question that I ask every single person on this show. It's a two part question. Okay. The first part is what is your definition of success? And the second part is what are three things you do every single day to ensure that success for yourself? Ooh. My definition of success is to live a joyous life. It's joy. I think that life is supposed to be fun. And I think that we're to sh shine that light on everybody. Like we're here to have a good time and we're here to, you know, to be happy. And whatever that happiness means for you is your definition of success. And it's different for everybody. But if at the end of it all, you're not happy, what's it for, you know, and you're not spreading joy. So to me, success is joy. And what do I do to bring joy into my life every day? I meditate. I pray. I meditate. I walk in nature. And I listen to uplifting music and I read uplifting words. I love it. And I love that you listen. So this is a fun fact about me. Uh, I love that you listen to uplifting music for the longest time in my life when I thought that I couldn't be loved. I, I told everybody that I love sad music. Uh -huh. um, and now I, I, I am literally drawn to uplifting music and music that pumps me up. And it's just such a different 
thing, wow. right? Because I think what music does, like music's powerful. I usually, I use it in my visualization practice all the time, yeah. but like the understanding that like music just feeds whatever emotion you want it to feed. And so yes. if you're feeling down, you should listen to uplifting music, not, not the sad stuff like I did for years, yes. you know, what yeah. was me type of stuff, you know, I think that's powerful. It is so important. Like, and, and I think because words and the lyrics, you know, it's not just the beat. You got to be very, very careful about the kind of words you allow into your life. You know, I, and Maya Angelou says it better than anyone. She says, you know, I believe words are things. I believe one day we will be able to measure words, the, the, mm. you know, the vibrations of words, words get into your clothes. They get into your upholstery. They get into your walls. Words are things you create your life with words. And I think when you add that element of music and beat and rhythm, that vibe with the words, it's transformational. I think music is extremely important. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So yeah. I wrap up every single interview with the same question, but before we get there, how do people find you? How do they get involved with your community? What's all the good stuff? Yeah. So they can find us on at futureyouproject.com. And the first thing I would recommend is to sign up for our newsletter because you get three free gifts in three days when you sign up for a newsletter. It's right there, futureyouproject.com. And then on our website, you'll see obviously our programs, our gifts and our resources. We've got some great blogs. All of our recommended books are on there. Some really good resources that are of no cost. And then um, the programs, like I said, we've got the private workshops. We've got the Future You family. I would love everyone to join our family. It's right there on the membership page. Uh, you can learn more about it there. Uh, and then, yeah, if you're looking to support anyone through anything, please consider Future You Project for your next gift. And I, I promise you, it'll make an impact in, in someone's life that you love. It will. And, and I'll tell you this. I mean, I got to I got to witness somebody open, opening it. And it's a really, really cool experience. And to know that you're the person that can uplift somebody else, like take advantage of it. Um, mm -hmm. And honestly, I am a big proponent. And everybody knows this that listens to the show. I'm a big proponent for community. Uh, and so the future you family is something that people should absolutely latch on to. It's insanely affordable. Um, yeah. I think people should definitely hop in and, and take advantage of, you know, creating their perfect future self. Uh, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing that you're doing. So like I said, I wrap up every single interview with the same question. Since the show is called The Growth Now Movement, that question is in your life, what has mm. been your biggest moment of growth? My biggest moment of growth was the moment that I was able to look at myself and say, I'm not okay. And I am going to sit with that for a while. Mm. Yeah. I love it. Jen, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story and your wisdom with my audience. But more importantly, thank you so much for being the person that pours into so many other people and you're changing lives across the globe. And I love seeing it. I'm so glad that we're friends. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.